In this lesson, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the contact form for our blog site. So I'm in my HTML editor of choice, which is Adobe Dreamweaver 5.5. You can use whatever you want to open the file. One of the advantages to working in Dreamweaver, although there are thousands, is that I actually have three different ways I can view my content up here. I have code, so I can see simply the HTML and CSS code. I can choose design so that I'm seeing just as it's going to appear when it's up on the web, or I can choose split, which allows me to see the code and the actual design side by side. When I choose that view, I actually have a vertical bar in the center that I can click on to actually make this wider or narrower as I see fit. So if I'm working more with the code, I might want to do this. And if I'm then going in and looking more at the design and I still want to see a little bit of the code, I can move it back if I like. So in this particular instance, we've got our header at the top and basically our uh, nav bar. We also have our aside is still here, but the big difference is that in the body content, we actually have our form. So I wanted to show you that over here in the code, you always have to start off the form with the form tag. And when you're creating a form, Dreamweaver will enter that tag for you. But you always start off with that tag and you can see it has an attribute here of action. That is determining where we want this email to be sent when someone clicks on the submit button. So all I've got in here, I've got some text areas. These are text fields, and this one at the bottom is a text area, and each one of them has a little tag that goes with it. So it's a label. So for this one, which is the name, when I click on it, it gets highlighted in my code. That's another thing I love about Dreamweaver. It makes it easy for you to find what you're working with. So in this particular case, this is an actual text field, and it's got a label next to it, and the label is called name. So these these two are connected as one item, as are all of these. And then down at the bottom is an actual message field, so that when I want to go in here and see what this looks like, if I want to preview this, I'm going to click on the little Live View button. So it'll show me exactly what it's going to look like. So this is the label for each one of my text fields. And at the bottom, I have a larger area called a text area that the person can actually click and drag to make larger if they want. So this is basically a very simple form, but you can actually reuse this if you want with your own blog and just change the information. The main thing you need to worry about is with the actual button when you are setting it up to send. You want to click on this and then you'll go in and add the information in your CSS file that tells the user where that uh, email is going to be sent. This is a basic form that you can go in and play with and kind of customize for your own if you want. But basically what we're using are text fields and text areas. Everything else on this web page is picked up from the home page. In this lesson, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the different types of elements you want to include in a form. I'm in Dreamweaver, which is my HTML editor of choice, and I have the contact form open. It's called contact.html in case you want to follow along. In here, I'm looking at the form and I'm actually in split view. In Dreamweaver, you have the ability to go into split view where you can see the code and also see the design at the same time. This is a very basic form. It simply has text fields and a text area at the bottom, and each one of these items has a label with it. And then at the bottom, there's simply a button. The user would click that button. It would automatically email the form. So when you're working with forms, you have a variety of different elements you can choose to add. If you go into your code and click somewhere, and then go up to Insert, form, you'll see the listing of a lot of the different things that you can use. So we have text fields in ours and there is a text area. And again, to review, the difference is a text field looks like this. A text area gives them multiple lines and in this particular case they can actually drag it and make it longer if they want to. So if you're asking someone to give a very lengthy answer or there's a chance there might be a very lengthy answer, the text area is a really good choice. Other options, and again, you need to click in your code and go to Insert Form in order to see them. We have buttons. Buttons can have different actions applied to them, so they could go to another page in the site, they could open a URL, or in the case of our form, they can actually submit the form uh, via email. 
We have checkboxes and radio buttons, which you might be familiar with on the web. The difference between them typically is that a radio button gives you a number of different choices and you choose one. And a checkbox allows you to pick multiple choices. So if you're asking someone what their favorite hobbies are and you have a listing of hobbies, you want to allow them to pick more than one. But if you're asking someone what their number one favorite hobby is, you would use radio buttons, which forces them to choose just one answer. We also have different kinds of list menus. We have uh, different types of images that we can apply. There's a jump menu, which gives you a drop down menu. So if you're giving someone a list of choices, instead of giving them this very lengthy list that appears on the page, a jump menu would allow them to click on it and then give them a drop down menu with all the choices. So these are a few of the more common ones that you can use in forms. And again, we're not using most of those. We're using just a simple text field, a text area, and a button. But when you're working with form fields, in this particular case, these all have labels accompanied with them so that when the information is returned, when the person clicks the submit button, and that information is emailed to me, the information that's returned to me from the form is name equals value. So the name of the field is called name, and then the information in the field that the user entered is called the value. So I don't want to name this field one, field two, and field three. I want to name them so that I know what the information I'm getting is. In my particular case, when I submit this form and someone views it, the answer that I would return is name equals Sally Cox and so forth. So you can actually set these up with whatever name you want, but you want it to make sense so that when that information is returned, you're able to do something with it. So that's just a basic look of some of the more basic design elements when we're creating forms in HTML5. In this lesson, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about another new form field in HTML5 called the input element. Let's go in and take a look at it. I'm in my favorite HTML editor, which is Dreamweaver, and I'm going to do a file open, I'm going out to the lessons in chapter five, and I'm going into the end folder and into bridges blog, and I'm opening the contact file, which is our form. So this is the finished one, and I want to show you what I've done. So in here, you can see that there are a bunch of form fields, name, email, company, city, phone, and message. But what I've added is an attribute to this new input tag that allows me to put some text in there that disappears when the user starts typing. So first, let me preview this for you. So I'm going to preview it in my browser. And this is what it looks like. It has a nice little phrase of text in each one of those when the user clicks. So it gives them a hint of what to type. When the user clicks, that text disappears as they start entering type. Very nice. So let's go and set that up. Going back to Dreamweaver and let's open the file from the start folder so we can add that attribute ourselves. So I'm going to do a file open back to chapter five to start to bridges blog and to the contact form. I'm going to click open. It looks exactly the same, but this one doesn't have that attribute in the tag. We're going to add it. Now, one key feature that I like about Dreamweaver is that I can use my split code so I can actually see the code on one side and the design on the other. So I'm going to click in the field for the name and it automatically gets highlighted in my code. So here's the input tag. All I want to do is add an attribute inside those angle brackets. So I'm going right here before the angle bracket and I'm going to put a space and start typing the word placeholder. The placeholder is the attribute that I'm going to be using to create all of these. So I'm going to click enter or return to accept the placeholder and Dreamweaver has added all the equal signs and the angle brackets, everything that I need to finish this off. All I need to do is enter the text. So I'm going to type your name here. I'm going to go down to the next one it actually highlights it for me. Go just before the angle bracket, space, start typing placeholder, and then just enter your email here. Go down to the next one, which is company. Highlights it in my code. Go to the end here before the angle bracket, space, start typing placeholder, hit enter or return, and type your company here. Go down to city 
And again, I want to look up here and find where I'm at the very end of the field. Put a space, start typing placeholder, and then put in your city here. Scroll up a little. We want to do phone next. So again, going in here, space, placeholder, and then type your phone here. And then the final one is message. So I'm going into the message field here, right in here. I'm going to type a space, put in placeholder, your message here. I'm going to save my file. I'm going to preview it in my browser. And there it is, with all of my text in place. It's a really nice feature. So that's a new HTML tag called the input tag that you can use to create a number of different things. We used it to create text fields. And then we went in and added the attribute called placeholder to give it that little text that will automatically disappear when the user clicks in that field and starts typing. Let's go ahead and take a look at another new element in HTML5 in this lesson called Mark. So this is great if you want to draw attention to some text and highlight it as you would with a highlight marker. I'm in my HTML editor. I use Dreamweaver. And I'm in the Chapter 5 folder, and I've got the form open. It's the file called contact.html. Now, because I'm in Dreamweaver, I have split view, so I can actually see my code and see the design. If your HTML editor just allows you to see the code, we can still work with that. What I thought we'd do just to show it quickly is that we can go in here into this section in the header and perhaps just draw attention to the 31 covered bridges and apply the mark element to it so that it gets highlighted. So I can easily click in this because I'm in Dreamweaver and it will become highlighted in my code. So I can go in here and click and drag and it becomes highlighted. I can double click on it. But for now, I can see that I'm over here in my, um, my little header section and I'm going to click right in front of 31 and I'm going to start entering the mark element. So I'm doing an open bracket and as I start typing and I uh, Dreamweaver actually shows me the, the choices of elements that start with those letters that I typed. Mark is the first one, so if I hit enter or return, it automatically is going to put it in for me, and then I can just finish it off. And then I'm going to go down and indicate where I want that to end. I want it to end right after covered bridges. So again, I'm going to start typing the open bracket and my close symbol, which is the forward slash, and look what Dreamweaver did it, finished it off for me automatically, which is great. I'm just going to save this and preview it in my browser. And just like that, you can see that the text becomes highlighted, just as I said, with a highlight marker. So this could be useful for drawing attention if you're talking about an event that's coming up and you want to highlight the date or perhaps directions on how someone can get somewhere. Any kind of important information like that, it's very easy to go in and highlight it using the mark element in HTML5.